In this video, I'm gonna share with you a Thai green curry recipe. We've got all the ingredients to pound up the paste and got a free range chicken. My mother-in-law is actually gonna do the cooking and I'm gonna do the pounding. Stay tuned for an authentic Thai family green curry recipe. Hey everyone, it's Mark Weens. I'm in Bangkok, Thailand. And today my mother-in-law and I are gonna be making Thai green curry with chicken. The first step in making this recipe is to pound up the curry paste. And so we've got all the ingredients laying out here. I think it's mainly gonna be these Thai, Thai green chilies that we're gonna to use to make it green. And then we're also gonna use a lot of spices. My mother-in-law doesn't write down any recipes, but somehow she just knows all of the ingredients and the amounts in her head and by taste testing. Uh, so I'm actually, we're gonna watch her and then I'm gonna write down all the ingredients and I'll, I'll include them in this recipe and then also I will write them over on eatingthaifood.com. You can find the full recipe and all the details and all the ingredients there as well. For this recipe, we're gonna be making a full chicken and it's not a huge chicken, it's a free range chicken. She said it was 1.4 kilos. The first step is just to prepare all of the ingredients to pound. So the first step is to peel your garlic. Next up for shallots. And the same thing, she's just gonna peel the shallots, kind of like garlic actually. Just get that skin off. Next up is um, galangal. That's about a thumb sized chunk. And she's just chopping this up in order to pound it so it's easier to pound. And he caught on, my got me. And it's young, young galangal. And next up, lemongrass. And these are only the bottoms of the stalks of the lemongrass. And then again, she's just slicing it finely to be able to pound it. And then next up, this is a kaffir lime. And we're not gonna be using the juice of the lime, but only the peel. And that's gonna provide so much citrus flavor in the curry paste. And next up, these are cilantro roots. Oh, I can already really smell that kaffir lime peel. It's so fragrant. All of the pre-preparation is done. We've got all the ingredients ready. It's now time to start pounding. You can kind of just throw everything. We're gonna eventually be putting everything and pounding it all together. But she's first putting in the galangal. And then lemongrass. And one thing I wanna mention, this is coriander seeds and cumin, which she just toasted in a dry roasted in a pan just to make it fragrant, just for about 30 seconds over a medium heat and dry roasted it, make it extra fragrant. And that's gonna go in the curry paste as well. It actually doesn't work so well to pound on a, on a surface that bounces like a table, so it's actually best to take the, take the mortar down to the ground and pound on the ground. Now in goes the cilantro roots and the lime peel. This is white pepper corns, all go in. And also the cumin and coriander seeds. I got the okay to just toss in everything, so next the garlic and the shallots. We're gonna pound all of these ingredients first and then after that we'll be adding the green chilies. Okay, come. In goes some salt. I'm gonna start pounding up everything. This is gonna, it's gonna take a while, but I'm gonna tell you that it is so worth it to make your own curry paste. You could buy green curry paste at the store that's already pre-pounded, and oftentimes in Thailand, actually, we go to the market and buy green curry paste that's already pre-made, but when you make it yourself and you control the ingredients and the flavor and the freshness, it's absolutely incredible. And one more thing I'd like to mention is that you can make a big batch of green curry paste and you can store it in the fridge or the freezer and then you can use it um, in small amounts when you make green curry. So feel free to pound up a whole big batch of green curry paste and keep on eating it. Also, if you don't already have a stone mortar and pestle, you should invest in one uh, because you need it for almost every Thai recipe. It's one of the the ultimate tools of Thai cooking.
I've just been pounding for about five minutes and already you can see how the oils of the lemongrass, the shallots, the garlic, and the kaffir lime peel, all of the oils are coming out. It's already smelling incredibly fragrant. It's gonna be delicious. My mouth is already watering for the final product. Next up, we're gonna add the chilies. And these are Thai bird's eye chilies, but they are green in color. So if you can get green in color, that's what's gonna give your green curry the green color. One more detail she just mentioned is that the green chilies aren't that spicy. So she's gonna add in a few red chilies as well because the red chilies are a little more spicy, but mainly Thai green chilies for this. So in go all of the chilies. And I'm gonna probably just add one handful first, pound them up a bit so they don't go flying, and then add some more. But we'll be using all of those chilies. All right, I think I can add in another handful. And at this point, you're gonna just keep on pounding and pounding. So I have a cup of coffee. You might wanna grab some coffee like me. And then keep on pounding. And you can really see the, the green color coming out of the chilies. Still have a lot more pounding to do, but it's coming along nicely. This is definitely the most time consuming part of this entire Thai green curry recipe. So once we have this, we'll be relatively not too difficult and pretty um, fast to put everything together. But I understand that you are very busy. And so if you have the time to pound it by hand like this, the green curry paste, that's the best case scenario because you'll get all the oils that will come out of the ingredients. It will taste the best. But I understand if you don't have the time, still better than buying store-bought curry paste in a, in a can or something. You can take the same ingredients and you can process them, food process them, blend them up, blend them up maybe with a little bit of water um, to get them going. Um, and then that will be the second best case scenario that will save a lot of time. But if you have the time and the energy, pound and plus, you don't need to go to the, this is better than going to the gym. You can get your workout in and have something delicious to eat at the end. I just got the approval. The curry paste is good to go. The next step, we've got a nice puree. The next step is to add, the final step is to add the, the shrimp paste. Kind of smush it all together with that shrimp paste. It should be a nice puree paste. I love that sound at the end of making your curry paste. It's kind of like a, a squishy sound. <laughs> For this Thai green curry chicken recipe, you can definitely buy chicken pieces or chicken thighs or chicken breasts or whatever type of chicken you want. But we're gonna be using a whole chicken and it's a free range chicken. So our next step is to wash and clean the chicken. She first chopped off the feet and the head of the chicken, and now she chopped it in half and gonna clean it up. Also, it is good with all the organs, so you can include the organs in your curry as well. Rather than cutting up the chicken into like thigh and drumstick pieces, the Thai style for um, lots of chicken curry dishes and soups in Thailand is to chop up the entire chicken into bite-sized pieces. I definitely just got splattered by some chicken juice. 
The chicken is clean and I have just set up the street food cart. We are going to assemble all of the entire green curry with the coconut milk and the curry paste. So the first thing she's doing, die up. She's just putting a pot onto the stove first, the street food stove. I'll write all the ingredients, but that's about a half a liter or so, maybe two cups. So first she's going to boil that water. And then she said she's going to put in the curry paste, the chicken, and boil that for a while while stirring. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Mom said the curry paste smells really good. Cup one cup me. Oh my god, me. She said it smells really good, the curry paste. So you put that curry paste, she'll use most of what we pounded into the water and dissolve that into the water first. Guy, guy, loco kiao, loco tom. That green curry paste is boiling away and it smells incredible. Okay, cop. And now she's adding in all the, the chicken pieces. It smells citrusy and you can also really smell those green chilies. Oh, that is called green curry steam on the lens. And she's moving over to the chopping board now to slice up some kaffir lime leaves. And toss those kaffir lime leaves in there to, to brew as well. That's gonna add more fragrance to your green curry. In addition to the chicken, it's common to add a certain type of vegetable to your green curry. And sometimes you can use like winter melon or you can use an assortment of different kind of tubular vegetables. We're going to be using Thai eggplant, which is a traditional additive to green curry as well. And then also she's going to add in some sweet basil right there too. Take the sweet basil and take it off of the stems. These are, I think, it, I think in English they're spur chilies. These chilies are not spicy, but they're sort of more for looks to add some red to your green curry. And then next step is for the, the eggplant, the Thai eggplant. She's cutting them into quarters. She's dropping the eggplant into the water so that they don't turn black. Oh, I wish you could smell that steam. Uh, so It's been simmering for about 10 minutes or so. She said the chicken is soft now and we're gonna assemble everything. Micah has come to take a whiff, take a smell of that green curry. Hello, Micah. You just woke up from a nap. Micah, I'm not gonna touch you because my hands are probably have some curry paste still on them and some chilies. But I love you, little boy. I love you, little boy. I love you too, Dad. And you can see a lot of the water has, a lot of the liquid has evaporated. So we've got a nice looking like thick curry paste down below there. Now in go the eggplant first. And give that a nice stir. And you can see how almost all the water has boiled out. Next up for the coconut cream. And yeah, that's the, that's the coconut cream, the thick, buttery, rich, good stuff. Oh, and you can just see how creamy that is. Oh, that's full of delicious fat. And she's adding about a spoonful of salt. But it's important, you wanna, you wanna taste test the curry because there's a lot of salt and also the shrimp paste in the, the curry paste that we pounded. So you wanna actually taste that liquid first before you add any salt, and then you can add salt to your taste. May my say nam black up. My kai say. Okay, up. We're gonna bring this to a boil, and since the chicken is already cooked, we're just gonna make sure that the 
the um, eggplant is cooked. So it doesn't really need to boil for very long. And then the final step, once the curry has come to a boil, the coconut milk has come to a boil, you add in the sweet basil, give it kind of a little stir, and then she added in the sliced uh, red spur chilies that we, she chopped up earlier. And then you don't want to really boil it too much longer because you don't want the, the sweet basil to lose its flavor. So you just boil for another minute or so, and we are just about ready to eat. All right, Mike? Right, Mark. Right, right, right. Okay, the green curry recipe is done, and Ying is gonna dish out a bowl now. At this point, so you have a whole pot of curry, you can dish it into a bowl, you can save some for later. By the way, you should um, start a pot of rice about, well, when you start to make the curry, maybe after you pound the curry paste, before you start to assemble the curry so that you have fresh rice as soon as the curry is ready. Okay. I'm sitting down to immediately eat some of the Thai green curry chicken. But you gotta come, come just take a really close up look of this green curry. Just look at how thick that is. From both the, the coconut cream as well as the, the curry paste. In Thai you call that kem kon mak, meaning it's very thick and rich. <laughs> yes. So I've also got a plate of rice. This is brown rice. I'm gonna go in chicken, bite-sized pieces of chicken, basil, put some of this onto my rice, put this on there, get some of the, some of that basil as well. Oh yes. <laughs> oh you can smell that, that green, like sweet green sweet basil aroma to this as well. Alright, and so you do have to be careful of bones due to our using of a whole chicken like that, but I love the free-range chicken and the texture. Oh, that chili as well. Mm. That is the way you want green curry to taste. Oh, it's so good. It has such a like, well, you can taste all of those herbs and spices that we pounded up in the curry paste. Every one of them. You can taste that little bit of citrusiness from the kaffir lime peel and also the leaves. You can taste those green chilies, the lemongrass, the a hint of the cumin in there. And then with the sweet basil, the, the richness of that coconut cream. Oh, it's so good. It's so flavorful. Mm. And one thing I want to point out is that uh, Genkia Wan Thai green curry chicken is quite a popular street food dish in Bangkok or throughout Thailand. But you like, in order, due to, due to cost limitations as well, um, but they often reduce the creaminess of the coconut milk and add more water. And they also tend to use less curry paste to reduce cost. So I'm not saying that's not a bad thing, but oftentimes green curry, if you eat green curry on the streets of Thailand, it's kind of it's kind of sweet and bland actually, and it's not very good. So I think the best way to to have green curry is to actually make it yourself. So I hope that you have enjoyed this Thai green curry recipe and I hope that you'll try it out from scratch using all all the ingredients you get. I want to say a big thank you to my mother-in-law, Me for making, showing us all how to make Genki Oan, and it's delicious. I'm gonna finish off the food here, and again, all of the ingredients and the steps will be over on eatingthaifood.com. Check that out. Thank you very much for watching this recipe, and let me know if you try it out and how it goes. I would love to hear from you. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up, and also make sure you click subscribe for lots more food and travel videos and Thai recipes. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.